Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah! You know, you guys are part of history. Amen. Amen. Family, you are part of history. Yes. Um, because you will be able to say to them many years from now that I was at the first resurgence. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In 2024, resurgence will happen. That's how I'm going to start. So if you have a calendar, you want to mark that out. For 2024, we're going to have resurgence from Friday 13th to Sunday 15th of December. Somebody listening to me. It's going to be a full camp. We're just going to be with Jesus. And it's going to be an awesome time in God's presence. Do you have a believe in amen? Amen. Do you know where that is holding? Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Glory to God. Somebody say, what are they screaming for? Don't worry. We will call you when the table is set. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I started a gist last Sunday, and uh, I said I was not supposed to speak on that, but that I will speak fully on it today. And so the Lord will have me speak on that today. Because I found out that it is not that the Lord has not blessed you. It is not that you are not supposed to live in the fullness of the blessings of Abraham, or more than that, the fullness of the blessings of Christ. The problem is that the blessing of Christ is for spiritual people. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and then verse 3, Scripture says he has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Therefore, if you are not living in the fullness of the blessing, it is not a problem with God, it's a problem of alignment. And the first alignment, people think, is alignment in ministry. People think that the first alignment is choosing a church. People think that the first alignment is to marry the right person. People actually think that the first alignment is friendship. Allow me to say to you that the first alignment is a spiritual alignment. The first alignment is a spiritual alignment. Uh, Let me not go out of myself. Let's go to scriptures today as we lay a foundation for what I want to share with you. 1 Corinthians and then chapter 2. And then we'll read verses 13 and 15. 1 Corinthians 2. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. 1 Corinthians and then chapter 2. And then I'm going to read verses 13 to 15. The Bible says... These things will also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. So, so who teaches the things we speak of? Speak to me. Uh, now, now, I need to announce to you, I don't like speaking to myself except I'm doing confession. All right, so when I'm not doing confession, I like to hear you. So who is he? Uh, who are the people who teaches us? The Bible says the Holy Spirit. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the Bible says, but the natural man. Look at yourself, neighbor and say, but the natural man. The Bible says, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The Bible says, but he who is spiritual judges all things. So the Bible says, number one, in that verse, the Bible says, in those verses of scripture, the Bible talked about the natural man. Right? And the Bible says, but there is he that is spiritual. So there is also a person that is spiritual. Did you see that in scripture? So the Bible says that guy alone can spiritually discern the things of God. That means for you to understand the things of the Spirit of God in this spiritual discernment. You can't think through spiritual things. You can't logically come to the conclusion as it concerns the things of the Spirit. The Bible says they are spiritually discerned. That means you come to an understanding by the use of your spirit. Bible says, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So it doesn't make sense on decisions Christians make. I'm talking about spiritual men, right? Why would you marry that person? Why would you decide to travel? Why would you decide to stay in Nigeria when jackpot is possible? Why? The Bible says he is himself not rightly judged by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? The Bible says, but you have what? The Bible says, what you have the mind of Christ. Don't worry. Um, that you're, what you're looking at is very slow. So that's just verse 16. But he who is spiritual. So are you spiritual? I don't know. 
I will know now. I want to teach you on what I've titled the spiritual man. The spiritual man. You see, when we gather together like this, one of the things we must do uh, again and again, one of the things we must learn to do is we must give attention to the word of God because there's no revival without the revival of the word. Um, and also, one of the things we must also learn to do again, ladies and gentlemen, is that we must also learn to pray and we must learn to worship. Can you help me celebrate, Sister Fumiojo, for that awesome day? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so, I want to teach you on what I've titled the spiritual man. Look at your name and say the spiritual man. The spiritual man. Amazing. A lot of things I want to preach here, not only me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry. I got this. Father, we thank you. Because the entrance of the word today will give understanding to us simple people. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. And I make my tongue the pen of ready writer. I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. In Jesus' name. And amen. How many of us have spiritual things? Promises of God hanging over our heads. How many of us? Raise your hand. Real people came to church. How many of us have heard God speak to us? And eventually you said it was your mind. Because you, it took a while. And it has taken a while and it has not come to pass. So you have concluded maybe it was me speaking to myself. How many of us in this auditorium have once had an encounter with Jesus? And um, we knew we saw him. I mean, <laughs> the way your body was vibrating. If they said Jesus was not real, you won't believe it. But after a while, all of those fire had gone. Good. How many of us are at seasons where we prayed and we thought everyone came down? And then we are going through seasons now where it seems like heaven is far. The problem is that every one of us starts for spirituality. Every one of us know and we understand there is something called spiritual. Even when they tell you there's nothing like that, they do movies that tell you there's something called spiritual. And this day, the spirituality and the concept of spirituality is very vague. You only need to look online, check online, and find out how people define spirituality. And what is it they call spirituality? Uh, and if you look at the word, it's actually a very confused word out there. Very confused word. Today, we think that each person must find their own spirituality. Uh, and you hear people say, it's my truth. Uh, so my truth, my way. Um, so this is my truth. I hold up to my truth. So often what they call spirituality is something mysterious. Something esoteric. Something about self-discovery. That has no direction, no connection with scriptures. Allow me to say that spirituality starts from God and ends with God. The Bible says God is spirit. And they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 424, the book of John. The Bible says in the beginning, God made man. Man was made in the beginning. He said, come, let us make man in our own image. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, and let them have dominion. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 to 8, that then God then formed man. So that the first ma the, the form formation of man is what you call the body. What God made at the very beginning is the spirit of man. Right? And, and by this definition, you understand that the search of spirituality without God is a search into error. Because it has begun in error, it will end in error. And many people have ended in error. Many people are now in what they call black magic, horoscope, telepathy, new age movement, uh, Eastern religion, witchcraft. I'm not talking about you marry a wife that manipulates you. No, that's not witchcraft. I'm talking about authentic witchcraft. People have gotten into these things um, because they do not know God, neither they understand Him. And I want to start by teaching you first that all over the heart there are three kinds of men. All over the heart, there are how many kinds of men? Three kinds of men. The first kind of man is the natural man. Can I have 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14? The first kind of man is the natural man. That's the first kind of man. He is the natural man. And we read that. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 that the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Uh, so, so that person, that guy is what you call the natural man. Now, it is the Greek word suchikos. That was suchi, suchi 
Call, quotes talk about man. Suchi uh, talks about the soul. So he's talking about the soul man. A man that makes all his decisions by his head, by his mind. He does not believe in the spiritual. He doesn't understand the spiritual. He lives only for his pleasure. Right? So I love it. I understand it. I, I don't understand it, but I love it. I like it and I live my life. I find people like that. Okay, so I have it. I can flaunt it. They wear anything they can wear. Uh, I, I feel like having sex and then I have sex. Uh, because you see, the natural man is subjected to the animal nature. Mm, do you understand that? Uh, the animal nature. Meaning that he, 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 when, when a dog uh, feels like sleeping with another dog, uh, having sex with another dog, what a dog does is that he chases the dog. Glory be to God. That is what is called the animal nature. The flesh dominating the spirit and the nature of man. That's why, that's what we call the natural man. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul began to speak about the resultant effect of the natural man. He said that man is jealous, that man um, is envious, that man uh, does a lot of things. Uh, that man fornicates, that man does a lot of things. He's under ponia. I mean, he does sexual immorality, every kind of thing. Drunkenness, can you see that? Heresies, uh, reveries, uh, he said, this is the man that is dominated by the works of the flesh. So whenever your life is determined by what you feel, that's the natural man. This is the man living under the control of the flesh and sexual passions. Listen to this. I tell people that you cannot almost, you can almost not live in this world without a country pornography. Am I speaking to real people? I'm just checking my email. I, I, I think it was yesterday. No, no. About three days ago on Twitter. And then I was just enjoying a comment. And then somebody just slotted in a pornography video. I mean, on that comment, they'll just add it there. If you are if you're used to that, you know what I'm talking about. I just add it there. And then I saw that, I'm like, ah. So now you don't even have to download. It comes at you. Now, a natural man will enjoy that sin. See, I didn't go to look, I didn't go and look for it. But a spiritual man understands that I can take control. And what do I do? I swipe it away, close the nonsense, and, and start doing what I was doing. A natural man is under the flesh and is under the domination of sexual passion. Our world has become a world full of sensual passion. Do you understand what I'm saying? All around. In fact, the definition of beauty now is how much you can show it. Do you know, recently I was laughing at myself because I went to Google LLB. No, BLL. I went to BLL. Is it BLL? BBL, praise God. I'm trying to be Generation Z and Millennial Pastor. I, I, I saw it on Twitter. They were saying Christian BLL, uh, BBL, uh, clinical BBL. I'm, I was wondering, what is this BBL? So I went on Google and I said, BBL. And I saw it. Said, How can this be Christianly? Oh, in case you are wondering, that's Brazilian butt lips. Glory be to God. You know, when I say some things, I like to just say, so that I return you to the Spirit. I was like, are you arguing that is this a Christian? So that, is he going to speak in tongues when he's doing the operation? I don't understand what makes the Christian BBL. <laughs> now, when you see things like that, and they, the reason we have become like that, and I do not really blame the ladies, is because the brothers have become a, nat a carnal people. They are natural people. So they follow after that. No matter how much you preach in church and say, listen, follow the art, follow wisdom, follow a good woman, they will still follow what they see because that is the God of the natural man, what he sees. What he sees is not about anything. It's about what he sees. He lives for his pleasure. I love it. I go after it. That's why they drink. Even if you tell them smokers are liable to die young, they tell you, I'm enjoying my life right now. We only know today. No one knows tomorrow. You start hearing this foolish wisdom coming out. The natural man, Suchikos, the natural man. Are you a Suchiko inside this place? Do you have Suchikos inside this place? When a lady walks, even when you are praying to Makapo, that's a natural man. That's a natural man. And there's the second set of people all over the world. We call them the spiritual man. So you can see that 80% of the world is full of natural men. I, do you understand that? Then we also have what we call the spiritual man. Who would you call pneumaticos? Numa from the word spirit. That's the Greek word for spirit. Pneumaticos, spirit man. I'm a spirit man. 
Spirits men don't beat their wife. Yes, sir. Spirits men don't, you know, I told you last week there is a sin of the spiritual man. Fornication and abortion is not a sin of the spiritual man. Because <laughs> a, a spiritual man can err when you actually go and take and do abortion. That's not hearing. Is somebody following me? That's wickedness. That is a sin of the natural man. A spiritual man can have pride. Can be arrogant and the Holy Spirit will reprove. But when we still begin to tell you stop sleeping around, we are actually trying to say, tell you be born again. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15, the Bible speaks as it concerns the spiritual man. Give me First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1. I love First Corinthians 3 1. I've read 2 15 when we started. Let's read 3 1. And I, brethren, this was Paul speaking to the Christians at Corinth. He said, I, brethren, I could not write to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal people, as to babes in Christ. He said, listen, I could have spoken to you as spiritual people if you understand spiritual things. If you were spiritual, I would have written to you as spiritual people. He said, but I couldn't do that. Why? He said, because you guys were babies in Christ. A spiritual man actually is a man that lives under the control of the spirit. His mind, his thoughts, is controlled by the Holy Ghost. He has the mind of Christ and he minds the things of the spirit. Whenever you hear canal song, something happens to you. Hey! But when we come to church and say, we go there, hey, so why are they jumping? We are, it's not our fault, it's that you're a natural person. We are spiritual people, so we mind the things of the spirit. Somebody said the word of the Lord is boring. We mind the things of the spirit. Somebody said praying in tongues for hours is boring. We mind the things of the spirit. Somebody said praying at all is a waste of time. We mind the things of the spirit. The natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. He can't understand them. But there are two preconditions for being a spiritual man. Number one is you must be born again. That man went to Jesus by night. And he said to him, he said, how can I see the kingdom? He said, except a man be born again. Born of the water and the spirit. 3-3, three, three, John. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You see that? And then that's the first precondition. The second condition is that you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because don't forget we are talking about a new man here. A spirit man. A spirit man we need to have the Holy Ghost. Because it's the Holy Ghost that controls him. It means a man who is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Does somebody, somebody understand what I'm saying? The spiritual life is dependent on the Spirit. The spiritual man is a man controlled by the Holy Spirit. Listen until your thoughts, your decisions, and your ways are under the influence of the Spirit. You cannot be said to be spiritual. You know, some of us, our, the way our thoughts are, you can sit down now and think that somebody died. You can think now and, and remove somebody's clothes. Even though we are all seated. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a natural man. The spiritual man discerns and esteems highly spiritual things. The spiritual man examines and convinces and reproves the natural man. When your best friend don't leave you convinced, even though they are sleeping around, you are not a spiritual person. In fact, Jesus has not taken your life. What is going on is that Jesus is helping you. It's not like you are fully born again yourself because you can roll with them, you can talk with them, you follow them to the party. The only thing is that you don't take the guy home. They take the guys home and they do the actual act. But you see, the spiritual man convicts the natural man of their sins. You see, when people come, those days when people see spiritual people, when they see Christians, they begin to say, why? You feel odd because they do something to you. They make you feel uncomfortable. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you start calling them Spirit Coco or you call them um, Christian Union. There's a name we call them because we feel like around them, natural men don't feel comfortable. But right now, natural men feel very comfortable amongst us. You see how far we've gone? You know, I want to repeat certain things I said on Sunday because Philippians 3, 3 1 says, for me to say the same thing to you again, he said, it is not, it's not very terrible. He said, for you, it is safe. I want to repeat some things to you. That a spiritual man is a man that lives all his life by the dictate of the scriptures. 
submitted to the instructions of the Spirit and compelled by the will of Christ. That's a spiritual man. Can I say that to you again? He's a man that lives all his life by the dictate of the Scriptures, submitted to the instructions of the Spirit, compelled by the will of Christ, and bonded to the love of the Father. That's a spiritual man. The spiritual man is one whose thoughts, behaviors are in control. The spirit is in control of his thoughts and his behavior. That's a spiritual man. In a spiritual man, he is only tuned to the satisfaction of the spirit. Satisfaction of the Christ. That's all. I said three things last week. And I want to emphasize it to you again. That a spiritual man looks upward. You remember that? God has called us to be worshippers. Spirit people worship God. Have you seen people who say, I, just, I come to church to just listen to the word? Those are not spiritual people. They, they sound like they are spiritual, but they are not spiritual people. Spiritual people understand that worshiping God is the core of their life. Spiritual people understand that I am created. He said, these people have I formed for myself that they may show forth my praise. We are made to praise. We are made to worship him. Spiritual people understand worship. Money does not come to him more than God. It's God that counts. He tasks after God. A spiritual man longs for fellowship. He has a deep sense of worship. He carries God's presence wherever he goes because he's conscious of the presence of the creator. Whether he's walking, whether he's sleeping, he's conscious of the presence of God. That's a spiritual man. Many years ago, I remember I was a protocol officer. I was, I was at the airport to pick up a guest. And I, I mean, I, I do that normally. I'm, I was supposed to go, protocols were supposed to go. I was supposed to go with them, lead the protocol officer. I was supposed to drive. But the man's kedu came faster. I mean, he arrived faster than he should have. So I was calling the protocol guys. They couldn't come, so I just drove to the airport. And I met this man. And I met this man. I mean, that changed my life. I, that was the day I knew some people carried the presence. Listen, there are spiritual people. At that time, I was very spiritual. You know, it wasn't like I was not born again. I mean, for me to head a team of protocol. I'd been in ministry for many years. But I had not seen somebody who carried that kind of presence. And he came. Entered the car. Hello, sir. How are you? And I took him to the car. And he entered and he sat down. And he just started singing. There is no holy. Not loud, sir. Not loud. There is no holy. My legs are shaking. I say, I'm a daily. Lord, help me here. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside him. Old spirituals. Not, no, no, it, nothing, no sound. I, it was not playing it. There was no modulation. There was no hard lips. It was just, there is none holy as the Lord. And then he would keep quiet. I thought he's gone. And then you hear, there is none who is like him. Ah. The, the car was saturated with the presence. If it's, I was sure that if a sick person had entered that car, the person would have been healed. Spiritual people. There is something you carry because you are spiritual. You see, many things we are looking for, we are looking for it because we are natural men. Spiritual men live in the blessings of God. That's why this is important. 2024, you cannot afford uh, to be crying like those who do not have God. Spiritual men have understanding. They know they are carriers of God. Because if you are a possessor of God, all of these other things shall be added unto you. Spiritual men looks inward. As soon as Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord, he immediately became aware of his sinfulness. Isaiah 6, 1-5. It was the same. Somebody said, but that's Old Testament. It was the same with Paul. The moment Paul saw the resurrected Christ, he said, what would you have me do? The moment John saw the resurrected Christ in the book of Revelation chapter 1, he told him of his weaknesses. Listen, if you have never changed anything and you are born again for three years, something is wrong with you. You are not truly really born again. He would have been telling you there's something to be fixed. The way you talk is problematic. Uh, he will tell you, he will tell you this is pride. He will tell you there are demonstrations of arrogance. He will tell you, you will know. You will know. It, because he's breaking you down. Listen, the more of him, the more of the light you behold, the more you cannot take hold of any darkness. The more light that pass through your heart, the more you can't take any darkness in. So that masturbation 
may be good before you became very spiritual. But it will go the moment you become spiritual. Maybe it's masturbation. You know how people just explain masturbation away? Is I'm not sleeping with anybody. It's just my pleasure. But the spiritual man, his pleasure becomes the pleasure of the Christ. I remember that song. I was ministering one day and I began to sing it. Let your pleasure be my pleasure. Let your word be my light. Let your pleasure be my pleasure. Let your word be my light. Until God's pleasure become your pleasure, you are not ready. Listen, you will see God fighting your battles. You will not have to pray or fast. Somebody does not like you. You are No, no, no. Because your pleasure has become God's pleasure, he will also ensure yours is done. You know, we have become a generation of give me. And all God is asking is become and I will give you everything. Become spiritual and I will give you all that you need. Listen, it is spiritual recklessness to believe that because we are new creations in Christ, we are perfect and there's no growing up to do. It's recklessness. We need to mature in the things of God. And then a spiritual man, what does he do? He looks outward. He's not just interested in the Lord blessing him. He wants to live a life of a blessed person. A spiritual man understands that he's blessed so that he can become a blessing. God has been good to me. I will ensure that the goodness touches others. A spiritual man is concerned about the welfare of others. God is concerned for fallen man. You must be. This is what brought evangelism. Matthew 28, 19. He said, text the word. He said, and go. Go is the word for every spiritual person. I want to speak to everybody around me. I want to tell them about the Christ. I want to go because he said go. You know, when I ask people, and, and this is a very valid question. You know, sometimes I just ask, ask, ask people this question. Like, if you have 150 million euros today, and um, will you buy a Jaguar? And many people will say to me, I will. Abby, is it not good to drive a Jaguar? It's a good thing. Praise God. But you know, spiritual men don't think about their comfort. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he, he, he snapped a picture of a car. That was the Benz. That, that's a Benz 2022. And, uh, I mean, when you see the car, there are cars you see, you don't speak in tongues. You just drool, you know. I mean, that car had all things. When I say, I mean, I mean, I mean. And he said, we would, all, we would have the money to buy this car. I said, amen, but we will not buy it. And it felt, it felt crazy. But 220 million naira, I will build four churches. That's where I think. Is somebody following what I'm saying? If you give me, I will use it. I'm not preaching poverty. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? But I cannot guarantee you that. Chibi is mine. In fact, one day I will call you and I'll say, that car is mine. You say, yes. I can do with it what I can. You say, yes. Trust me, when I call you for that kind of thing, I've sold it. That's what it means. Because for a spiritual man, it is not just his comfort, it's his blessings. The, my father and the Lord once said, when I am 60, I'm going to buy a Jaguar. In this salon, I'll buy a Jaguar, brand new. He showed me the picture. Jaguar. Not a uh, Tokumbo Jaguar, brand new. He had already gone to where they were selling it. They had measured his leg and all of that. I mean, he was ready. So I asked him while we were doing the preparation. I said, when is the car coming? He said, I did not buy again. I said, what happened? He said, I just thought to myself, how many times did I use in this city? How much money can we use? How much things can we do with that money than buying a car with it? You know, the reason many of us will not become those generals is what you will do when you become like them. Bishop Oedipo said in his book, he said, I had a jet, private jet, before my parents died. He said, but they never for once entered it. He said, to go and do what? Is it their car? Is it their jet? Is it my own? He said, it's for ministry. If they are not invited, where are they going? But you know that's not you. If you buy a private jet now, ah, 
You are first of all flying all your family members to Dubai just because you can. I do you know what you can do because you can. Have you ever, I, I said to people, you know, we say that these people are preach prosperity, riches, and all of that. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever seen Bishop Oedepo's jet inside the jet before? Have you? His picture inside the jet. Have you ever seen it before? Think about it. Think about it. Aha! That tells you they have, they, they've died long time ago. Look at how many pictures of your inside the car you have. That car is not your own. See how many you have. Can you see what I'm saying? We abuse them. Say, I can it buy. I can it buy. That tells you he knows why he bought it for. It's for kingdom purpose. That's why he can say, I've never left Winner's Chapel on a Sunday in the last 20 years. It's not that he has not gone to minister on Friday that he should have missed service on Sunday. But because he has a private jet, he can quickly return. So they know he's a tool. You, you don't know he's a tool because you're a natural man. Look at the flash screen you have in your house. You have snapped in front of it like 20 times. Everybody have it on their screen. Everybody have it on their phone. Everybody. We have become, you see, the word, the devil's idea is to keep telling us it is okay. But what he's selling to us is for us to remain natural men instead of being spiritual people. Before you post that picture, ask yourself why. Why should a lady post with her back? Why? 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 I have not understood that thing. Why should you snap like this? Why? 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 Now, now, if I if pictures are for, for, for memories, so what memories are you keeping like this? Why? Natural man. I remember when they first of all asked me to join the deliverance department. I wasn't interested. I was just saying, I just want to teach the word. I just want to, when they told me you cast out devils, cast out devils, I love that. I love that. Because devils are the problem with the world. Demons. So I'm going to cast them out, make the world a better place. And I did that. See people vomiting things that are very crazy. I mean, you can make you vomit the things you see. I'm telling you. Why would you continue doing it? Because you are a spiritual person. You understand this for the blessing. They are not going to give you any money because of, of that. I don't understand why a generation will start shooting deliverance services. People are rolling on the floor at the worst of their states. A snappy picture to show people that you are anointed. Can you see how we are? Those days we do deliverance services all night. Not even a video is permitted. But now, we will not only do video. We will have four people with iPhone, with reels. What are we doing? Natural man. We are letting the world dictate to us what is permitted. We tell ourselves that is the way to show the world that we are power is in the church. And we are letting the world dictate and we are soon changing to becoming the world. You know that there are drummers and, and keyboardists that permanently, no, they, I'm not looking at their side now, that permanently put fo phones by their side, man. Permanently. Oh. Soon, soon after that, they will now mix it together. They are never bothered that they play the keyboard and the spirit does not move. They are bothered how many people will like their ears. Do you get what I'm saying? Everybody will receive their own. Amen. Everybody will collect. The third kind of people, because in 2024, you have to be spiritual. Look at him and say 2024. You have to be spiritual. Now, the third set of people, and that's the amazingly crazy ones, glory to God, are the one we call the Sakikos. The Sakikos, the Kana men. Now, Sakikos are guys who are born again. Or they still live like natural men. One time in their journey, they have accepted Jesus as Lord, but they still live as natural men. Somebody understand what I'm saying? So they are not here or there. First Corinthians, give me first Corinthians chapter 3. Let's read verses 1 to 4. Listen, not all born again believers are spiritual people. We have carnal believers, and scripture spoke about them. 
And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Next verse. Wow. The kingdom of God survived violence there, baby. I fed you with meek and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able. Why? For you are still carnal. For when there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal? And behaving like mere men. For when one says, I am of Paul, another says, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Now, open your Bible to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Let's see verses 6 to 8. Open it, open it, open it, open it. Open it on your phone, open it, open it. Open it. If you look at this screen, I would have gone before you. Romans 8, 6 to 8. Are you there? Are you there? Look at that. The Bible says, for to be carnally minded is what? Is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. So there are people who are carnally minded. Carnal people. And there are people who are spiritual. The Bible says, because the carnal man is enmity against God. That means he's an enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are of the flesh cannot please God. So Paul was saying, listen, there are believers, because he wrote to Christians at Rome and Christians at Corinth, and he was saying there are believers who are carnal. Ask, ask Marvelous out. And say, Marvelous, let us kiss you. We have to try it first before we get married. Have you seen people like that? Somebody, one idiot, told my younger sister, said there is a problem in their family. That anybody that marries without having given birth to a child never really give birth to a child. Have you seen that? You had that kind of nonsense in Yoruba land. I don't know whether they say so you have to first of all deliver the child. Talking to my sister, what idiot? Talking to my own sister. Say so you first of all must first of all deliver. My, my sister said, how will I deliver? I said, well, of course we'll have sex. And then when you are pregnant, we will not get married. This guy speaks in tongues. And he believes that nonsense. Speak in tongues. Can I? So perhaps they had sex like 20 times and my sister did not get pregnant. She, he moves to another person. Do you see what I'm saying? The wisdom of this word. What if they deliver the child and the child dies? What if she's pregnant and she loses baby after they have gotten married? She needs to get pregnant and you, and you get married. What if she loses the baby after eight months? So you, she won't be pregnant again. Or you will not divorce. You see, there are things that they talk about that you can only find amongst kind of people. We have born again believers who are still under the lordship of the flesh. They are controlled by the animal appetites. Governed by mere human nature, not by the spirit of God. They have their core in the animal nature. Aroused by the animal nature. We call them sinning saints. Sinning saints. Sinning believers. There's a possibility of killing the Kana man, but they don't kill the Kana man. The Kana Christian is not so different from an unbeliever. Have you met believers that are not so different from an unbeliever? In ways, in actions, in thought, and in lifestyle, they are not so different. The only difference is that this one has acknowledged Jesus as Lord. Or you can't even tell that he's a believer. You can't, there is no proof of the Christ in him. There is no evidence that he has met with the Christ in his thought, in his lifestyle, in his action. I found a born again believer who stays with his girlfriend and they have sex together and his tongue is louder than every one of us joined together in this church. <laughs> what is that? After you have had sex? 
controlled by the animal appetite. Controlled fully. That is why you see when people say praying does not change people, prayer is a joke. No, they mean that there are people who pray and they have not changed their attitude and their character. And they think just by prayer they can doing God to change in their lives. The Christianity that does not cause a change in you cannot change you. Somebody abuse you, you can't swim. You are not a believer. You are a baby. You are a saki coast. No, no, you saki coast. That's a saki coast going. You see? Some people are not married because they are saki coast. Babes in Christ. A guy greets you, hello, how are you doing? Say, well, I don't like this one. No, he's not asking you out. He's just greeting you. Sakikos. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want you to remember Sakikos. Do you understand? Those are Sakikos. Somebody together in church, they, they are keeping my list in the church. Sakikos. You, you don't greet your neighbor and in the middle of the night she can't sleep because of your prayer. Sakikos. You see what I'm saying? You are preaching to teenagers and you are sleeping with them. Sakikos. They go and come into teenagers, purity, purity, and purity. You are hugging them and touching them in ways. Sakikos. So I'm saying, if doesn't greet me, I don't greet him. You don't have money, you are proud. It's Sakikos. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Have you discovered that poor people are very proud? The solution to carnality is to crucify the flesh. Crucify the flesh. To put to death the carnal nature. The animal nature. Put it to death. You cannot go around following shape all your life. It will destroy your life. It will. It will. We can't shall kill all the shapey girls in, in, in the world because of you. It's easier to kill your nature than to bankrupt yourself. Mortify the flesh. We need spiritual men in church. We need spiritual fathers. We need spiritual mothers. We need spiritual pastors. We need spiritual people. Praise God. <laughs> Write this down. The lasting cure to carnality is spirituality. I know that when some people masturbate, they say, don't watch a movie. Don't do this one. Delete. Or don't buy data on your phone. Change your phone. And they give you all of these methods. The only solution to carnality is spirituality. The reason some ladies cannot live with men is carnality. You are talking to me like that? Sorry, who are you? If you are a spiritual person, you would have known that you are clay. And the life you live, you live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for your sins. That's who you are. You see what we're talking about? You sang. People started falling. You should know that it was not your son. It was a presence that followed. It's not you. I am a prophet. And so we cannot greet you again. The lasting cure to carnality is what? Speak to me. Now, let me quickly just, um, let me jump some a session and then let me just give you the marks of a spiritual man. I, I think I promised you uh, on Sunday, I will give you 10 marks of a spiritual man. Somebody say, who should I marry? Who should I do business with? People who have this kind of marks. One of our members got a job with one, some set of people. I told him. Uh, he started talking everywhere, saying they were good people. These are nice. I spoke to I said, <laughs> the people you are dealing with are Sakiko. So <laughs> when they are done with you, it didn't take much. It didn't take much. When they finished with him, he was to change his post. I said, I told you. <laughs> he, was, he was advising me when I was advising him. <laughs> ah, you think you can advise advising your pastor? <laughs> me that I know all men. I know them. This Sakikos, Sakikos will do anything for money. Sakikos, they will do anything for five minutes of sex. 
They don't mind buying you a car for five minutes of sex. Zakikos. And they will come to the church to take church girls because they also want to marry prayerful people. Even though all your life, there will be the prayer point but you will be praying. <laughs> You'll be praying. You see what I'm saying? Ah. When you hear, I will pray, I will pray. You <laughs> because you have prayer points. You marry Sakikos. Can our people. Sometimes when you hear pastors, even on the pulpit, say, what is this one talking about? What? I don't want to mention it. What is this one talking about? Sakikos. Sakikos. What concern me, concern you? I bought a wristwatch of 200,000 last. How does that change my life? See the word. That will die one day. We are talking about eternity here. We are talking about a hope that's never put to shame. See the scriptures. Don't forget I said that a carnal woman will ruin your life. And a carnal man will ruin your life. There is no difference between an unbeliever and a carnal. In fact, I will rather take an unbeliever. Because I will pray that you will encounter Christ than this one that has been carnal for 15 years. There's no hope of a change. Oh, you are praying. We used to pray 15 years ago. <laughs> what are you doing here? Those are sakikos. They will discourage you from an adventure in the spirit. They will tell you you don't need an adventure in the things of the spirit. Why? They are sakikos. In fact, when you are telling them you are coming here today, they say, all oh, day? Hey! Sakikos. They can't take it. You know why? When my wife told me, said, I did go into heat at all or not. I said, ah. I said, when you get to the pulpit, she forgot to ask you. You know, she's a very nice person. Ask them that when they resume 8 o'clock every Monday, do they not stay in that place till 5? Do you leave? Some of you, you add additional time. You are there till 7. Sometimes there is, say, a break. Which break? You walk in the back, say, break. When the queue is there, your edge of operation will say, sit down. You can't go now. But when you come to God's presence, you are checking time for me. Sakikos. Your appetite is tuned to the natural. It's not tuned to the things of the spirit. Your appetite. So you know what they say in Christianity today? Our church is boring. They are not saying there's no word though. They are saying there's no fun. You see what we're saying? Their appetite. So the church is adjusting to the appetite of the world. That's what we are, we are adjusting to the appetite of the world so that we can take the world. Therefore, we will have people who will acknowledge Jesus as Lord. They will come out for utter call. But their life will not change. So what we have are a lot and loads of sakikos in the church. Canna bunch. They, you will see them inquire, they are sleeping with each other. They just... Just like the word. In fact, one man was. Ah, ah, pastor said, Hallelujah. If I don't like this, they have gone. See what's going on here? A church full of sakikos. Because when they became born again, we adjusted ourselves to them. Not tell them that there is a need for an adjustment for them to be sons of God. You see what I'm saying? Praise God. The marks of a spiritual man, very quickly. That's just introduction. Extended time of the word. Number one, a spiritual person submits to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The spiritual man submits to the leading of the Spirit. When we subject ourselves to the command of the Spirit, then we live in the Spirit. There is no born-again believer that goes and visits a lady and has sex with a lady that the Holy Spirit is not to reprove on his way. Or convict on his way. <laughs> Be careful. And you keep going. In fact, sometimes you don't have money, you borrow money to go there. Jesus said, I've come as it's written of me in the volume of the book. But you have come as it's written of me in the volume of the flesh. Manifesting spirit, uh, fleshy things. Spiritual men are led by the spirit. Acts chapter 10 verse 19. Peter came to the house of Cornelius because the spirit had led him there. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. After they worship and they pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Barnabas and Paul for the work in which I have called them to. Acts 18, 9 to 11. He perceived 
led by the Spirit. They couldn't go into a place because the Holy Spirit, 18, 9 to 11, give me Acts 18, 9 to 11. Paul and his group could not enter into a place because the Spirit hindered them. The Spirit hindered them. Listen, dear friends, the Holy Spirit leads those people. John 14, 26, Jesus gave us a promise that when the help has come, the paracletos has come. The paracletos has come. Look at that. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. For I'm with you, I know one will attack you. And he continued there since one and a half years. That means there were people who had gathered against him. But the Holy Spirit told him in a vision. He said, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Until we live by the commands of the Spirit, we are not ready. I am a soldier. A deep battlefield. Sing the song if you know it. Hey! Oh, my name. I will answer a million. But do you know how many times he has called your name? How many times? Give. Say no. How many times he has called your name? Bless that person. You said no. How many times he has woken you up? You say, I will answer a million times. Woke you up on the bed. You did not answer. But when we are singing it now, you will be rolling on the floor. I will answer him. The practicality of the Christian faith. The listening to the summons of heaven. When it becomes on you, you answer. That is what it means. I used to preach a message called the commander you must obey. The Holy Spirit. He is the commander you must obey. He will speak to you. And when he speaks, you must listen. Listen until we live by his command. We are not ready. Spiritual men yield to the promptings of the Spirit. People say, why is it that pastors marry the best wives? If they show you the pictures of those people, before glory came, you will not marry them. No, do you think I'm joking? Even if you see our picture, you will not marry us. This one, Alan. I saw his picture while looking at his picture yesterday. My hand is, is, is fatter than him. I'm telling you. If at that time he had come to meet you, your parents would have said, what did you bring home? You know that kind of, you call yourself a man? I saw me and, and she was saying, but what were you proud for at that time? I did not let it pass. I said, look at you too. <laughs> and listen, I am telling you that spiritual men cease. The promptings of the spirit. Just because that's your wife. You, you are looking. Can people shape? He said, that is your wife. You are saying shape. You are saying, what job is she doing? When the Lord told me that's my wife, she was not working. Oh. Ask her. One day she will tell you the story. Ah, I was paying her salary. Ah. Ah, I was paying her salary from the richness of my salary. <laughs> what I tell him? Have you ever paid somebody before in your life? I was paying somebody. I was paying so much. <laughs> I was paying somebody. I, was, I think I was saying 12000 at that time. See <laughs> so what I'm saying? But you are earning 200,000. You cannot date somebody and pay. No, I'm not saying that there are, you know, there are people who just want from you. They're entitled beings in this Lagos. Beings. They're not, they not men. Beings. Entitled beings. I'm dating you. I should buy you an iPhone. Are you crazy? Am I, why, why should I buy you an iPhone? Because I'm dating you. How, 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 how does that concern me? You see, it is no longer a gift when you demand it. If I think you need a phone, then I will buy you a phone. If I know you can afford it, I'll buy you a phone. You won't just sit down on your rampart and then be making demands for my life. And I'm supposed to marry you. No, I will not. I will marry a Sakikos. <laughs> Somebody who determines the value of his life by a phone. Because that's what it means. If you are asking me that if I don't buy that phone, then I don't love you. That means the value of our relationship is that iPhone. So if I can afford it, I'll buy the iPhone and the next day, I'll cut off with you. But my wife will say that's even nonsense. I should not have done that at all. So I'll buy you the case of the phone in case you find a man. 
And then number two, a spiritual man runs strongly after the Holy Spirit. Listen, there must be a panting for the Holy Ghost. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be where the Spirit is. Spiritual man, man runs after the Holy Ghost. Catherine Kuman, that beloved and maiden of the Lord. She comes to our meeting. And I was telling you, they don't pray in tongues in our meeting. But when she comes in, in that sweet atmosphere of worship, she begins to look at them and say, don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. He's my friend. He's all I've got. Don't hurt him. He's here. He's here. Don't hurt him. He's all I have. Don't grieve him. That's somebody who is running after him. Until our prayers and our devotion is not duty, but it is love, we won't get what we are supposed to get from him. Now, I've done my one-hour prayer. Sharp, 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 sharp. So you stand up and you did not gain anything. What should take you to his feet is not duty. It is love. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. A spiritual man is a God chaser. He keeps chasing for his presence. He's in love with the Holy Spirit. A spiritual man runs strongly in following the leading and the drawing of the Spirit. Have you read Songs of Solomon? Have you read Songs of Solomon? Spiritual people, you, I, oh, you don't read that part. Okay. But well, you read in the IKG. Reading Songs of Solomon is in the Bible. Spiritual people that they read it. It's okay. See, you see, I'm looking for my beloved. See how she was searching for her beloved. Draw me away. The daughters of Jerusalem will run after you. Ha! The Sholomites, the king has brought me into his chambers. The daughters of Jerusalem will be glad and rejoicing. You will remember your love more than wine. You remember that song of Kiss me with the kisses of your lips for your love is better than wine. Your love is better than wine. You've never had it before, Lawrence Oyo. Better than wine. He said, kiss me with the kisses of your lips. That's Songs of Solomon, actually. He wasn't singing anything that was not in the scriptures. He was just singing Song of Solomon. There must be a panting. You are, in, are you in a love relationship with God? Do you really love God? Or you are using him like an ATM machine? Have you ever seen anybody who goes to an ATM and knock it? I love you. No, it's transactional. You go to an ATM, you put your, you put your card, you instruct it, and you collect your money, and you leave. Sweetheart, you leave. God is transactional for many Africans. That's why your brothers, your cousins, your uncles get abroad and they don't go to church. Because for them, when they were here, it was transactional. To keep them from demons, devils, uh, to help them retain that job, uh, to get them promotion, it was transactional. We need to stop being transactional with God. So that if you don't get the job, it's still God. If you don't get promoted... He is still God. We are not doing business with him because of the things he can give. We follow him because we love him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. Listen to this. The fire of love makes more fire. The fire of love makes more fire. Are you in love with God? When we worship God, do you, do, are you not afraid to just... Break down and cry. Do you keep appearance in God's presence? Do you really love him? I should suggest you must go with the love of God. For there is no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life for a friend. When they put the nail on his hands, he looked at your face and he thought you were worth dying for. He saw you this morning, 2,000 years later, and he said, that guy is radical, but he is worth dying for. He died. For Jesus, he was personal. Somebody said, I should not take Jesus personal. But he took me personal. He called my name while I was yet in the mattress of my mother's womb. I will take him personal. Do you love God? And, I, and that is a sincere question today. We've had a lot of prophetic Christianity. Transactional Christianity. Do you really love God for who he is? Many years ago, I will lie down in University of Illinois, Mini Campus. And I'll be singing, Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, 
I will lift my hands and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. It's not because of what he has done. It's because of who he is. Even if he doesn't do anything again, he has done all things well. Even if I don't drive a car on this earth, he's done all things well. There is a home in the heavens because of him. Believers should start living because they know that there is a future home. You see, I go to prepare a place for you. If you are not so, see, I will not tell you. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. Number three, the spiritual man manifests an hunger for the word of God. An hunger for the word of God. Listen, if somebody asks you out, sweetheart, if somebody asks you, I'm talking to you now. No, no, yeah. Don't, don't write again. Look at me. If somebody asks you out and he does not have these things I'm talking to you about, you are going to have a problem in marriage. So, yeah, I marry him. He now change. No, sir. Go change. He, he, you are the one who is Sakikos. What you are looking for was a power pack. You know, is it six pack? Are we? There was time I was going to the gym. After I stayed for a while, I saw that one was trying to come out. So it was coming like two packs. I said, glory be to God. But eventually, I could not keep up. Because it's difficult for a spiritual man to keep up. It's very difficult, I'm telling you. Have you ever been to the gym before? Ah. Tony, how, how is it? Gym. The dedication and commitment. Ah. My father called me back home. Listen, he must be a person of the word of God. Jesus said, for, for Matthew, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Anybody that tells you leave the Bible alone. No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> this In this new age. When they say in this new age, just leave them. Let them go and find their own new age believer. A spiritual man lives by the word of God. You can understand what I'm saying? The Lord Jesus loved the word and he practiced it. Jeremiah 15, 16, I found your word and I did it them. Your word became a joy and a rejoicing to me because I am called by your name. The Bible says in 105, 119, Psalms, uh, say your word is a lamp and a light unto my path. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that the Bible tells us that the word of the Lord is instructional. It corrects, it reproves uh, that the man of God, verse 17, uh, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good works. Perfection is in the word. John 17, 17, Jesus says, sanctify them by the word. The word is truth. A spiritual man will spend time daily meditating on the word of God. Allow it to permeate into your thoughts. In 2024, allow the word of God permeate into your world, life. Don't just read devotional. Are you following what I'm saying? Say, I've finished. Oh, two chapters a day. I'm done. I'm done. Ask yourself when you are done, what will you begin to do differently by the reason of what you have encountered? That's how people change their life. Not just, ah, we are finished. Pastor said we should pray. I prayed. Pastor said we should read the word. We have read it. No, that's not how your life changes. That's how your life changes. You know what I'm saying? The food of the spiritual man is what? The word of God. We cannot be energized by God except you spend time in his word. And then number four, the spiritual man manifests a spirit of compassion for the lost. I saw a statistic recently. And it is that in a whole year, 90% of believers will not win a soul. 90%. They will come to church, but they will not win a soul. Bible says when Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Have you ever been moved with compassion for those unbelieving people around you? Have you ever told them about Christ? They rejected Jesus, but his heart was moved for them. The spiritual man will be moved to weeping. There are people around you you can't preach to because they'll be laughing. But you can weep for them in the place of prayers. You can practice neology for them. You can kneel and begin to pray for a word that is bent on pleasure. When Paul went to Athens, he did not admire the beautiful architecture of Athens or the modern advancement of that time. The Bible says in 17, 16 of the book of Acts, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was gripped in him when he saw that the whole city was given to idolatry. He was grieved. When you see that the generation is taken by sex, I hope you are not lying to yourself. 
A lot of people have sex in this Lagos on the regular. And they are called believers. I hope you know. A lot of people are sexually perverse in this time. A lot of people are addicted to drugs at this time. Even if you can't do anything, you should be able to pray. Because prayer does not cost anything. In your room, you can't pray. Listen, when we have zero concern for the dying world, it means we have never been touched by the passion of the Christ. Number five, the spiritual man manifests a spirit of forgiveness and long-suffering towards those who have treated him wrongly. Do you remember the last person that hurt you? Can you remember? You remember the clothes he wore? Or she wore? You remember? That's it, that's it. When that person comes in now, you know that you lose your joy. You know what I'm talking about. Spiritual man forgives. Peter wanted to manifest Sakikos. He went to Jesus and said, how many times should my brother hurt me and I will forgive? And he suggested, you know some of us suggest to God. He suggest, suggested and said, up to 70 times. Seriously, I will not lie to you. I think it was magnanimous. 70 times is a lot. Is it seven, Abby? It's a lot. Because some of you cannot even forgive people twice. A lot. He did not have the Holy Spirit living inside of him then. And Jesus says 70 times 7. 490. If you need to forgive somebody and you say that it's now 490, something is wrong somewhere. That you can't take 490. Because I know there are people we can count 494. I don't know whether you know people like that around you. I mean, it's almost in a day they can hurt you like 10 times. I love you. And they will say, they are the one who will say they love you most. Jesus was saying permanently you need to forgive. As many times as they hurt you is as many times you must forgive. Ephesians 4 verse 32, Paul said, forgiving one another. We must. There's no place for revenge in scriptures. There is no, listen to this, listen to this. There's no place for pettiness or canceling people. See, I know people, boys, sorry, men, who are very petty. Adults were petty. Petty adults. They will look at your message like this, they will not respond. Because you did something to them that you did not even know. That is what? Mansami, what is that? Sakikos. Sakikos! You cancel people. Do you know what is the definition of cancel? What's the definition of cancel? They don't exist anymore. Why? Because they ought you. Do you know how many times you have heard Jesus? I don't want you to laugh it away. I'm not talking to other people. I'm talking to you. You, you, you. I'm talking to you. Just what I'm saying. I'm, don't, 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 I'm not, don't, don't think I'm Because they say, tell them, sir. No, no, don't say, tell them. I'm talking to you. That's the demonstration of Sakikos. No, no, I'm not angry. I just go on my own. I want them to go on my own. You roll long, pa. You roll, you roll, you roll. Look at this blood in your mouth. You're a liar. Is hurting you in your heart. You can't enter into the blessings if you live in offense. That's the way God, the devil, sorry, that's the way the devil steals from us when we live in offense. You cannot pick and choose who to forgive. I forgive my mother, forgive my dad. You can't pick and choose. Listen, the bigger the wrong done, the greater the urgency and the need to forgive. For all forgiveness is a tip of life and of time. On the cross, after being treated wickedly by you, and you, and you. Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. There could not be a greater example for every one of us. The spiritual man will not abhor awful feelings in his heart. Can I break it down for you? Have you discovered, man, that when somebody hurts you and you don't talk about it, it's easy to go. But when somebody else comes 
and now start talking about that thing. I see the way the person was talking to me. And they will now put petrol. And even the angle you never looked at it from, they will now show you other perspectives that are very spiritual. And I say, ah, that's true. They will now also remind you that that's the attitude because that's what, exactly what it is for Sister Tunde. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you put it together and I say, ah, I will treat that person's mess up. Do you get what I'm saying? What is going on actually is not that you cannot forgive. Every believer has the capacity because the Spirit of the Lord says in Romans 5 that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So it is possible for us to forgive. If we cannot forgive, it's not because we cannot, it's because we choose not to. It's a choice. I'm not going to forgive. You are going to leave this place calling those people who watch you. So we have not spoken to your fathers. In fact, it's fathers that have entered our line in this generation. So we have not spoken to your dad in a while. He's a useless man. I agree. He's a fool. I agree. He's mad. I agree. I agree. I agree. But the problem is that you are not a man. And the problem is that you are not in the shoes. And the problem is that you are listening to a danger of a single story. And number two, he's even at fault. Everything they told you was correct. He's at fault. But Jesus says, forgive. Well, So are you going to forgive? Some of you are fighting people that you really even see. That's how crazy this thing looks like. You are not even going to see them. They are not every day in your space. And you are fighting them. But the devil wants to keep you there. A spiritual man can never be careless about sin. Because he's keenly aware that the holiness of God forbids such attitude. Number six, a spiritual man pleases the Lord and denies himself. A spiritual person will strive to please God in their lives by living a life that is pleasing to him. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 8, that the flesh and people who dwell in the flesh cannot please God. This means if you want to please the Lord, you must dwell and walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. It's not about I feel like. There's no feel like. I don't feel like praying. I have never, I have never felt like praying. Did that shock you? I have never felt like praying. Never felt like preaching. Never felt like reading the Bible. But feeling has got nothing to do with it. You won't trust your feeling. I mean, do you know how many people you have said you love and you have not married them? Men will look at me and say, I like three now. But you know, ladies, their own is worse. Because even when they love the person, sometimes they can't tell the person. So they have to even move on. <laughs> so how many people have you moved on with? You say, uh, it's my feeling. Feeling. Feeling has got nothing to do with life. Love is a choice. It's a decision you make. It is maturity to accept that, but that's the definition. Not the one they show you on Hollywood and Netflix. It's a choice. Life is a choice. You must choose to please the Lord. Please the Lord. The spiritual man shall live a life of self-denial. For the more we die to ourselves, the more of it we partake of. The constant battle of the spiritual man is the mortification of the flesh. That's the battle you are enlisted to. The mortification of the flesh. That the flesh must die. You must put, Paul said, I put my body under. It doesn't dictate what I do. When we fasted 14 days, how many of you fasted? Truthful people came to church. How many of you felt like I should break today by two? You felt this man chatted me. He said, This man chatted me. He said, He said, You know, yesterday, sir, he said, I broke my fast like 11 p.m. I said, Okay, so what's it? He said, Yes, this is what I'm going to. Can I shift that one and shift it to the next day? Because this day is not looking good at all. If you have told me you always feel like praying, I know you are lying. Prayer is work, baby. Face it and walk it. How many of you wake up and you feel like going to work? Have you ever felt like going to work? Especially on Mondays. Weekend is just a fluke. The thing is, the thing is, on, is on marijuana. This is so fast. <laughs> and then we woke up and then, when did I leave the office? I'm supposed to go back on Monday. What's going on here? 
But you know what you do? You wear your shoe, crying, but you arrive there. You must arrive. That's what you must do about spiritual things. You must always show up. Always arrive. This year, 2024, you must always arrive. Somebody say, when is 2024, I will do it. Oh God, God is not moved by the Greek, Greek calendar. Start it now. There's no need to wait for another two weeks. From now, it's time to pray. Mando. See, when I even think about it, think about it. The more I think about it, the more I don't make the decision. So I just stand up from the bed. After like 20 minutes, it will come. I will stand up there and I begin to walk around. But if it doesn't come, it does not come. But I will be in labor. You must strive for spiritual authority. You must strive for spiritual things. It's not going to be dashed for you. You are not going to just become a professional one day. Do you know how many times this man played the keyboard and nobody called him to play keyboard? Struggled for years. Until now, if he doesn't come to church, we are in trouble. Do you know that that takes expertise? Spiritual things also take expertise. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't just start reading the Bible today and you expect that you won't be bored tomorrow. You will be bored. But you must show up. Like you show up for work, you must show up. Read that Bible again. You don't understand anything. Don't worry. You are not supposed to get revelation after three days. Keep reading. God does not expect you to be a teacher. Keep reading. One day you will understand it. Somebody say, I pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Keep praying in tongues. Strive for mastery. Strive to please God. Nobody likes going on evangelism. Have you ever been told to preach in a bus before? God told you to preach in a bus. Did you preach? You pretended you didn't hear any of you. In fact, some people have stopped taking bus so that God will not tell them that. After all, God cannot tell pastor to preach in a bus because he never takes a bus. So, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Crucify the flesh. This year, you will crucify the flesh. They will say amen. No, don't say amen. Crucify. That cigarette, break it. Throw it away. Throw the fire away. Throw everything away. Crucify the flesh. All this watching Korean movie. Somebody, I, I said, but I saw, you see what they are doing now that people are showing how many Korean movies they have watched. Have you seen it? You see, they will put dot, dot, dot there on their status. Somebody in this church. When I saw how many series she has watched, I, ju I just told myself, something's wrong somewhere. Sakiko Sneer. Something's wrong somewhere. How can you have that time? Korean movies are so long. And so, no, the person you are thinking is the one, it's not the one. The person I'm talking about, no, I said, she was, ah! I said, this one has graduated. How can you have time to pray like that? How can you have time to study like that? Season movies are one of the killers of our generation. The same 24 hours. Season movie, you watch suit. After suit, you watch Korean movie, you watch jacket. That's why they have suit up your destiny. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? This year, you must tell yourself, I, because many times when we talk about striving for the things of the spirit, people think we're only talking about sin. There are things the devil puts in our life that waste our time. You must delete that Twitter account this year. Let me say this to you. I have the word of, I'm not like that prophet that tell you you're popular on Twitter. I have come with a news to you. You will never be popular on Twitter. So delete it. It's wasting your life. Let me say, people think Instagram is very, there is nothing like Twitter. Nothing. There is, that, I, 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 see, I'm grateful for you don't know how to use it. Don't learn it. Don't learn it. Don't learn it. Because you will not save, you see, Instagram will be killing your data, so eventually you will run out of data. Twitter will never. You just be reading. You just be reading. And from the next one, you are to the next one, you are going on and on. And you can't attend ministry like that. Spending five hours on Twitter. You will never be popular. I'm telling you. Go sing. Oh, can waste time already. Delete that thing for excellence in ministry. The only people those things work for are celebrities. Are you following what I'm saying? Say, you know, somebody telling me, ah, Pastor does not know that now. I have like 10, 10 likes, 15, 15 likes. After you have wasted 2023. If you continue like that, by the end of 2040, you will now be getting like 200 likes. 
A spiritual man walks by faith and not by sight. Listen, God will tell you some things that it will only take spirituality to attain it. For I'm a God of faith, not a God of sight. Second Corinthians 5 and 7. A spiritual man understand that God transacts business by faith. God told me to come to Lagos. And I came with 10,000 naira. I did not send me to Ikorodu. On my way, which one? He said, go to the island with 10,000 naira. Even you to think about it. You can't even get a guest house room in the island, can't get for, for 10,000 naira. Thank God I have a landlord. My landlord is here. He used to be my landlord this year. You know what I'm saying? But listen, we came. Does it make sense? No. You cannot do the things of the spirit by sense. It has to be by faith. Many of us are missing out on what God is calling out to because we do not have faith. And let me say this to you. Stop pretending you have faith. You don't have it. This year, begin to learn faith. Faith comes by and hearing the word of God. Soak yourself and immerse yourself into scriptures. That's how faith comes. There is something called the spirit of faith. It will latch out onto you when you are dedicated to it. You want to allow, if you walk by faith, external circumstances will not discourage you. A spiritual man understands that faith is the substance of things. Oh, for the tangible evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 1. Spiritual men move by faith. Number eight, a spiritual man is spiritually minded. We are told by the apostle in Romans 8, 6 to 8 that the carnally minded people are different from the spiritually minded people. Carnal minded is death. Spiritual minded is life. To be minded means to mind the things of the spirit. To be excited about the things of the spirit. Being spiritual is what enables a spiritual man or woman to set their affections after heaven. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. We set our hope and our affections on things above, not on things on the heart. Look at the things that still moves you. That brother has everything. But you still told him no. Because he doesn't have a car yet. There are lazy idiots. Who, I'm not saying say yes to them. They are not going anywhere. All right. But there are folks that you know they are going somewhere. You can't determine their tomorrow by your, their today. Action is easy when it comes from an inward principle. The streams flows from the fountain that is within. The spiritual man is minded about things of God. He wants fire. He's desperate for God. He wants God. He's dependent. Number nine, the spiritual man manifests spirit of dependency and prayer. A spiritual man manifests the spirit of dependency and prayer. God, only you. Only you matters. Only you make sense. In the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. That's dependency. Bible says in, in Ephesians 6, 18, praying with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. Anybody that tells you it's not about prayer is a joker. Say it's not about prayer, it's not about prayer, he's a joker. Let me put it very simply. Uh, because you see, when we talk like this, people don't understand it. We do not pray to only get things from God. Prayer is how we keep our koinonia going. Can I say that to you again? We do not pray to do what? But prayer is what? I have come. I've lost come. No worry, come. You don't have to worry. You should just come to your father's house. Don't waste your time. So, prayer is how we do what? Get our relationship going. So, um, he, he's dating you. I, <laughs> Saki Koso. We are talking spiritual things here. You see what we're saying? He's dating you. Now, but he calls you. So, you are in uh, Ogumasho, school in Ogumasho. He's in Lagos, living life. And he's proclaiming he loves you. He asked you out and you said yes. But he calls you once a week. And he tells you that it's, it's, it's work. When you graduate, you understand. I, I get home tired, vanished. Sometimes I just throw my phone down and I sleep off. Then eventually he now travels to the U.S. Then I start calling you once in two weeks. 
Then the Yankee boy now returned home. He now knelt down and give you an ink. What will you say? Will you say yes? What Yankee boy? What, what, what do you Yankee Yankee? You say but she says she will say no. You know why she will say no? Because if you love me, you will keep in touch with me. If you love God, you will keep in touch with me. Many people say, you know, I don't pray anymore because there's no prayer point. Especially all those ones who have traveled abroad. I don't really pray. You say, yeah, but don't pray a lot. Because you people, there's no, there, you know, you, you pray to get a boss. You pray to get a job. Uh, you pray. And it sounds so, it makes a lot of logical sense. Natural men. Sakikos there. The reason they do that is because their God is transactional. They were serving a transactional God. But like he just said, you cannot claim you love the Lord and you will not keep in touch with him. It would have been stupid of her to say yes to that kind of relationship. Because you are, how do you know somebody loves you? It is by connection, by the call they make. How are you doing? Sometimes you are saying, even if you are busy, can't you drop a message? Even if you are busy, can't you just call for two minutes? That's exactly what God has been asking you. That even if you are busy, can't you drop a call for five minutes? Even if you are busy, couldn't you have sent a message? Even if you are busy, could you have checked on me? If you claim you love God, then you will keep in touch with him. Do you understand that? But your God is transactional. If because you do not have a prayer list, you can't call. You know some people, I've never prayed you that thing. You write it down. Mark it. Malo Kapalia, number two now, Father. See how many times you have been doing that and see that your life has not really changed. Why not change the method and begin to just worship God and throw yourself at his feet and just bless his name and just worship him? They asked Baba the boy one time and the question was very simple. How many minutes do you use to worship? He said, oh, every time and at all times. When you see those people, they rarely ask God for anything. They just worship God and serve him. If you will serve God and just worship him, you will discover that many of these you are asking for, the Lord would have done them. He would have done them. The reason 2020, 2019, sorry, 2019, you have been asking for a husband and he's still there now. The list you wrote now is still there. God will have me tell you that it's not the one delaying it. You are the one. See, all of these things shall be what? Added to you. Thank you. Do you understand what we're talking about here? How many of you say, I can do five minutes? I can drop in. I can check in on God. Raise your hand. I can check in on God. I can. Listen, it's, it's not that hard. That's why Jesus says, pray without ceasing. But you are looking for... I remember when my wife just got a job. And this will happen to you too. And can I use this to speak about spiritual people? Charlie folks who are spiritual in school. I mean, in school, you had hours of prayers. Two hours! Hemenoki! Hemenoki! Hekoboshia! Helele! And then you graduate. And then God gives you a job in Lagos. That you have to wake up at five. And then when you wake up at five, you are inside this traffic. And then you get home, you can't even sense your legs. Do you understand that? You can't sense. You know they are there, but you can't sense them. Somebody now passed on and said, pray, pray. You don't understand it. But it is not me that's your problem. Your main problem is the fact that there is a guilty conscience inside that I have abandoned God for work. I have abandoned my first love. If I'm talking about you, I've got a message for you. Listen, that time of less of that year, you will never have it back. That's not the message you want to hear, but that's the truth. You will never have four hours again. In fact, it will reduce. Now you are even good. When children come in, they wake you up by 4.30 because they have to be prepared for school. So what can I do? you will now begin to take advantage of every moment. As you drive to, to work, you pray in the spirit an hour. You take advantage of that traffic time. Instead of you looking out, we are not there yet. You plug yourself and start listening to a sermon. And then you take advantage of your weekends and take a stretch in prayers. I do two hours every Saturday morning. I do three hours every Saturday morning. God is your father. I gave you the job. He was one who gave time. He understands that you can never... Half hours to pray daily again. 
While you are in school, sometimes you have lecture only twice a week. 400 level student, financial student knows that, right? But now, you have lecture every day. Every day there is lecture. You have to show up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Take advantage of that. Dependency on God. Spiritual people have active prayer life. Do you know what I said? Active prayer life. The reason the worshippers come here now and they have to drill you, drill you, drill you before you enter the spirit is because your spirit, the dura cell is low. How about you, sir? Out of energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Spiritual people have active prayer lives. You can't live a spiritual, spiritual life if you have a weak prayer life, as you'll be prone to satanic temptation. People of God, one of the reasons many Christians struggle with sin is their weak prayer life. Jesus said it simply. He told the disciples to pray that they would not enter into temptation. The reason you have always manifested, say it's because I'm tired, that's why I'm latching out. No, it's because you don't have a prayer life. That's why there are so much manifestation of anger. Do you get what I just said now? Finally, ladies and gentlemen, a spiritual man keeps company with spiritual people. A spiritual man does what? I can't hear you. Who is your best friend? Don't answer. The way you looked at me, like <laughs> spiritual. I'm not sure if has a best friend. You can even say it's Jesus now. A spiritual man keeps company with who? Now you can see why we say you are a Sakikos now. Ah, when them girls come, all of your people and friends are homosexuals. Even though you are not, you are soon becoming a, is it a pink they call them now? A pimp. <laughs> He said, that's how we save the world. I know. But are you very comfortable? You are very comfortable amongst them. Are you comfortable amongst us like that? Are you comfortable amongst us like that? Yeah, girl. The disciples walk with themselves. They took notice that they, that company, had been with Jesus. Spiritual people lost spiritual people. You just want to be in the company of the saints. It just, after church, you are off. But after work, you are there. You are more excited of Fridays than you are excited of Sundays. You know I'm talking about you, right? Church is far. So you come on some Sundays. You don't come on Sundays. But you have never missed a party on Friday. Even let them go and eat in their way, you will go. You see what I'm saying? When you see church members and all you talk about is the fault of church members, they are they, they, they don't love people. I, I've, I've seen ladies say, I don't like church people. They don't like church people. They are, they are always biting. Your friends don't backbite with that beer on their table. Are they not talking about girls? What is that? Is that not backbiting? The problem is that your lust is the problem. You love the things of the world, but your heart is in church. Do you get that? You love the things of the world, but your heart is in church. We've got to change. Look at him and say, we've got to change. I'm tired of Christians who cannot have... And that's why many of them marry people who are not Christians. Because you marry the people who you work with. 
Eventually, it will now become our prayer point. Ransom house, I, do, I want to be sleeping at night. Because 2024 is the year of marriage for many people. Amen. Just know that if you come and meet me, I will not marry Sakikos. If you have not killed the flesh, you will wait till 2025. Because I cannot, I cannot just hear, he slapped me. I, I did not. I was praying in tongues and my hand just connected to me. I've, I've not told you that story before. A deacon that beat his wife. My father in law now went and said, Kilo Shele, deacon, what happened? Baba! Koyemi. The girl was talking to me like this. My hand was moving. I was praying in tongues. My kapala, my hand was all moving. <laughs> The old eyes, the old face, punch up. He said, he even said with his own mouth, I was praying in tongues. That's what we call a spiritual beating. Sakikos. He has started shouting at you before you are mar getting married. And you are still going ahead. It's easy. This year, you have told yourself, I will have an hairstyle I'm going to choose. I have a hairstyle. This is what I'm going to be dressing in 2024. Some of you have planned like that. I'm asking you, how will you dress up in the spirit? We have a family. It's the family of God. Brothers love one another. The common nature and the spirit of the Father dwells in them. Birds of the same feather and even color must flock together. Start having spiritual people as friends. So that the day you are down, they encourage you. So that the day you are down, they will not be telling you, ah, tell me around that is stupid. In this Lagos, six people live by their salary. And then you, they will take you to the hand of a man who will use you for their destiny. Beware of becoming weary of a company of spiritual people. Beware. Beware of loading a spiritual ministry. The saints keep their spiritual being with the excellent ones in whom is their delight. Listen, God will give you influence, but he must first of all trust you. That's why I said it's not by Twitter. It's not by turning and showing up. It is that you must pass in your heart the test of God. If God cannot count on you, he will not make you count for him. Until he can count on you, then he will make you count. For him, not for others. It is time we understand that 2024 is not a year for us to chase. It's the year for us to receive. Because if we will properly align and position ourselves spiritually, the Lord will give us things. It is a function of will you let the natural man die so that the spiritual man can live. Both can live together. One will die while the other increases. Listen, dear friends, the spiritual man can live the life that God wants him to live. Every time you pray in tongues, you build up yourself on your most holy faith. Every time. I want to show you something as I end today. Come again. Come again. Come. Two of you come. I want to show you what happens to you when you became born again. Come. I want to show you what happens to you when you become born again. So here is a man. Here is a natural man. I preach the message of God. He became born again. But before that time, he was Fagbo. <laughs> before that time, Fagbo, Mugbo, um, Unshomo, you know, <laughs> carry girls, slain girls, and all of that. And I mean, you always say, I mean, well, what, what will you use our fineness for at this time? At this time. So now he met with the Lord. Now he's born again. Now, these are his two nature. He's born again. This is his flesh. Can you see how tall he is? <laughs> Can you see how? So that the carnality, that's the carnal guy. So now he's born again. Come. So you stay beside him. He's born again. This man before was Suchikos. Now, this is his demonstration. Now, I told you that they live by the animal pleasure. So, this is the demonstration of the flesh, and he manifested it. Fagbo, you understand? Pornography, everything he does. 
So that's why he's tall. Now, when he begins to pray and to study the word of the Lord, something that happens to him. So here is he, you come. Here is the spiritual man. As I say, you follow the hand, follow the hand, follow the hand, follow the hand. Now that's the spiritual man. Look at this, look at that. Some of you, that's your, that's your life right now. That's your spiritual man. So that at certain times, you have to stand up to see the spiritual man. You see, at certain times, the spiritual man wants to talk. Holy Spirit will talk. He said he was faint. And so you did that thing. And I said, I should not have done it. Something told me. Something told me. But what? He Holy Spirit, you should have stopped me. You should have stopped me. It's not that I cannot stop you. Look at him. He's very low. So something that happens. As he begins to pray, begin to pray. Is that how you pray? <laughs> Turn up! Okay, but you know that, eh? I mean, if the flesh is this big. Now, something that happens to him. As this is going on, one day he sees a girl coming. Right? Come. Let's, man, let's show them. No, you are always, are you shy? Sit down. Akmike, come. No, you can look at me. I won't call you. Look at me. Up. Look at me. So as, as Akmike is just, you are playing, you know, Akmike just walk like this. Your eyes will follow Akmike. He is telling you, stop that, stop that, you are praying, stop that. So your eyes, stop that, stop that. He is telling you, come on now, glory be to God. Now, as you pray more, the day you say no, and you continue praying, this guy rises a little. This guy begins to go down. Now, as, as that happens, that transaction begins to happen. You keep coming to church, you keep praying in the spirit, you wake up praying in the spirit, you pray some more. Don't worry, you are fasting, Abi. Are you not coming, man? How did you serve? So, as that happens, this guy elevates more again. As he prays, this guy goes down. So, he gets to a point where the thing is almost the same. God said, No. He said, No. You are almost like a day you'll be spiritual, the other day you're like this. So, you can see that, ah. This is the toughest time. Because both of them are speaking the same language. They are, they, so there is a day you masturbate one day, and then you did six months of no masturbation. See, hey, 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 multiple. And that, the day you did your celebration of six months like this, you just masturbate. Uh, that's because they are, they are square like this. There is no laying on of hands for masturbation. You grow out of it. Spirituality is the answer to carnality. Is somebody following me? So as this man maintains that duty of the spiritual man, pray in tongues. Uh, I told you the company of the saints is not following evil guys. He's still maintaining worship, uh, going outward, going inward. And then he begins to do evangelism. And the one lady seems, are we? He said, it's me, oh God has done it. You should follow me to church. I don't know that. Even he does that. The spiritual man was very cool me by what? He stands up a little, you understand that? The spiritual man, and then this one begins to go. And then he prays some more, the spiritual man. So now his spirit man is almost at Paris Passu and even taller than him. So he becomes a spiritual person. So there is no laying on of hands for spirituality. Spirituality is as a resultant effect of growth and maturity. The more you are intentional about the things of the spirit, the more you discover that you are then growing in the things of the spirit. So that there are seasons. Somebody was in my house recently and was telling me about how something happened. And normally, he will fight and she would have scattered the place. <laughs> she said, and when she got on, you're like, ah, kilo shele, see me. What has happened is that you have grown. You see, when you grow in the things of the spirit, it's not like when you grow in the gym. That one, you can see it in the mirror. This one, it is when situation of life comes and you see the way you respond. Somebody call you and say somebody is sick very close to you and you start laughing. Before, you would have been afraid or you know nothing is going to happen. Why? Because that spiritual guy has grown. A day will come, therefore, that this guy will ask for anything. You say, who am I Masturbation. It must be a long one. And then this guy will become irritated at masturbation. Just the thought of it irritates him. Now, I know what I'm talking about. I had to go through that process. The thought of it will irritate you. At that time, you know what you have done? You've just seen that guy falling down. That guy has just that guy has just gone down. Do you understand? So that you can now call the person you are dealing with a spiritual person. Do you understand that? 
You must have that image in your head. That's how he works. If you are not a spiritual father, you can't raise godly children. If you are not a spiritual woman, you cannot be a spiritual wife. You can't be a good wife. The way it works is that the God who started the institution is the one who has said the only way to move in this institution is by being spiritual. Until somebody would do something to you that you do not like. Normally, all you do is to cancel the person. And you see the person and say, what are you doing? Even in certain wonder, Now, you have conquered that. What you are doing is that you are manifesting the spirit. You are moving in the spirit. That is what 2024 is about. It's about growth. It's not about just having people in church plenty. No, it's about growth. Spiritual men in church. That when you come and say, this is who I am dating. I remember when this young man and that young woman came to me in Suleri and they told me, we are dating each other. I told them, I said, this is a problem. If you tell me you can never come to me again, I said, you are not dating anybody. That's the first thing I told them. I've never met them before. I expect spiritual men to keep their word. Integrity. If God says you are my son, he never changes it in scriptures. He is your son. You are his son forever. All this, uh, <laughs> I'm moving away. It's not the way of the kingdom. I have to check your phone to be sure you are mine. It's not the way of the kingdom. Somebody understand what I'm saying? It's time for resurgence in your spirit. Somebody understand what I'm saying? It's time to pray some more. This is why we pray in the spirit. The Bible says, building up yourself on your most holy faith. The more he prays, the more he's being built up. The amplifier says, continually like an edifice. Praying in the Holy Ghost. When we are coming to church today, my, my wife, my daughter asked, he said, sir, is that a skyscraper? The mom said, there's no skyscraper in Lagos. When we go to a place where there's a skyscraper, I will show you. There's just tall rice building here. But listen, you have to build yourself from being a dwarf in the things of the Spirit into an edifice. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. That's what you need. That's what I need. Continually praying in the Spirit. Continually studying scriptures. You, you're not getting it as you ought to. Don't try to get it like PFA will get it. Don't try and get it to teach. But appear. Just the way you turn off for work. Turn off for spiritual things. Turn off for prayers. Turn off for evangelism. Turn off for, for spiritual things. Somebody turn off for worship. When they are worshiping God around you, increase the volume of the music. Turn up. The way people turn off for that video. I saw a video recently. And one guy came in and they were all fainting. They were fainting. That is the way you should do when you hear about spiritual things. When people want to worship God in this church or wherever you are, be excited. That's a spiritual person. No, no. Let's wait for what they will sing. No, it's time to worship your creator. It's not about their song. If they don't sing, let the song come out from you. You are a spiritual man. It's, you are not responding to tunes or music. You are responding to God. I will worship you forever. It doesn't matter. If I start the song, they can't, they will first of all come and look for the key. But it does not matter. It does not matter. He that listens and the one I'm singing to, he does not care about tunes. He cares about the heart. Therefore, there will be people whose heart, are, whose heart are not right, but their voice is right. And I will sing better than them. Because the way we mark is not the way he marks. He marks your spirituals. He marks your heart. That's how we mark. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. It's not about the modulation. It's about your heart. Is somebody listening? Come on. Many of us need to invest in the Bible. Go buy your Bible. Stop being distracted reading Bible on your phone. It's messing things up. God says to tell you, it's messing things up. I have an hardcover Bible. Just you know what I'm saying? You are a man. You are planning to be a priest. It can't be a phone that you make, you make you a priest. Carry your own Bible. Carry your own Bible. And read. Open this book. Because this book of the Lord should not depart from your mouth. That's how you have good sources. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you understand it? How many of you are saying, Sakikos must die? Sakikos must die. The flesh must die. You know, there are people when they see me doing this to a lady, say, I'm a pastor, you want to go on something? You know, that's what they think. When they just like, say, those pastors are just sleeping with all the girls. Sakikos. People are just canal. Will they make heaven? Yes, or probably. But they are canal. You know that's the way I answer that question. Have you discovered that? I say yes, or probably. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
But as I've been preaching, some things have been coming to you that you need to kill. Is that not so? For the first time today, we're going to kneel down. For the first time, not the only time. I want you to kneel down wherever you are. Search me true and true. See my life would be. Stand up, stand up. You are not under Sakikos anymore. No place where you want to be. Come and make my life your own. You know the prayer point? Come and make my life your own. Turn into a prayer. Come and be everything I have. I have and all I know. Search me true and true. See my life would be a home. Don't sing it. Pray it now. Pray it now. Pray it now. Come on now. I, I, I'm asking you to take that addiction to him. I'm asking you to take that addiction, that pain to him. Take that sickness to him. He hands today. Let's stop giving excuses for demonstrations and manifestations of the flesh. 2024, you are a sane person. 2024, you are a spirit man. Numakinos, that's who you are in 2024. Numakinos, that's who you are. I'm not fighting them. I'm not fighting them. I, 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 I just keep them. I give them space. I give them space. Manifestation of the flesh. Manifestation of the flesh. That desire, insatiable desire for movies. Let it end. Let it end. Insatiable desire for the flesh. Let it end. Insatiable desire for pleasure. That there is an incision in your ears that only always, just like canal music, it ends today. It ends today. Father, take it away. Take it away. Oh. Take it away. Oh. Everything. It might be fear, lack of faith. God has been speaking to you concerning his heart desire for your life for many years. You've not done it. You've not done it. Take it away, Lord. Take it away. Is somebody praying that. Take it away. Take it away. Come on. Take it away. All the manifestations of carnality. All the manifestations of the flesh. The Holy Spirit is here. Angels are here right now. Just cut him and loose. Pray with a sincere heart. Just cut him and loose. Cut him and loose. You, 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 you are dating somebody. Or you like the person to touch you in certain ways. Manifestation of the flesh. You are putting zeros at, at numbers. Lying to get promoted. Manifestations of the flesh. Your returns are different from the returns at work. No, that must stop. It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and adds no sorrow. And adds no sorrow. There's no sorrow when we follow the leadings of the Spirit. For somebody, this is why you came. This is why you came. This moment right here is why you came. Take anger from me. Help me, Lord. Take anger from me. Help me, Lord. You have three more minutes. Take anger away from me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. If you are online at home, just kneel down wherever you are. Wherever you are. Listen to this on YouTube, Telegram. Just power, tangible presence is there with you. I just say, Lord, take it away. Every nature that is of man, of, of, of every animal nature, every nature of the flesh, demonstrations of carnality, take it away. The God told me, say, preach that message to them. When they become spiritual people, I will make them examples of my blessings in the world. I'll make them examples of my blessings in the world. First, we must become spiritual people. Some, some of you took, took vacation away from God this year. Took vacation from God this year. Of us took vacation from God. There were months you are fighting God. Some of us have been fighting God for years. God said to tell you that I see you. And there's no running away. Where will I go from your presence? <laughs> there's no running away from his presence. There's no running from his presence. Lord, take it away. It's anger. You have been disturbed at that level of manifestation. 
Say, Lord, take it away. Take it away. Take it away, Lord. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Just take it away. Everything and all things that does not represent you. Everything and all things that is not of you. I am dying, oh Lord. I have had a voice and it would I love to. Consecrate me, Lord, in the hands of faith. And I'll be close and drawn to thee. Consecrate me, Lord, in the hands of faith. And I'll be close and drawn to thee. I'm tired. God said today you is tired of Sunday, Sunday Christians. Sunday, Sunday Christians. I want you. I want your heart. I love you. God said to tell you. Consecrate me, Lord, in the hands of faith. And I'll be close and drawn to thee. Oh, can I sing this song for you? Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. <laughs> Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the precious Consecrate me, Lord, in the hands of faith, till I be drawn to thee. Draw me near, near our blessed Lord, to thy cross, where thou art died. Draw me near. Lord, may I bless it, Lord. There are people here that God says to tell you that He saw you in those secret ways. He saw you, and that there are many destinies attached to yours, and that He's insisting on your life even today. But that there needs to be a becoming before there is a blessing. There needs to be a becoming before they enter into the fullness of the blessing. Say, you have, you have complained. You have complained enough. You have cried enough. God said, it is not with him. It is with you. It is with you. Say, I have called you. I, have, I, have, I kept calling out to you. Kept calling out to you. But you told me no. He kept persisting the hand of my grace over you. He kept persisting the hand of my grace over you. He kept persisting the hand of my grace over you. God says, come home, come home. Ye that are weary, come home. And asleep patiently, Jesus is calling. He's saying, come home, come home. Come home. You have three more minutes. I'm already taking time in prayers. Don't worry. It's an extended time of prayers. So you still have your time. I just want to flow with the Spirit. Somebody right now, the Spirit just, it's just rebooking you for a thing. Now you say it doesn't matter. He says it matters. It matters. It matters to your destiny. It matters. You have been joking with the call. It matters. It matters. You have not been making full proof of your ministry. It matters. It matters. It matters that you deny me. It matters. It matters that you don't love me like you used to. It matters. It matters that you have forgotten your first love. It matters. This is not where I met you. This is not where I met you. It matters. It matters. It matters. 
Yes, it's not a sin. But for your life, it's a precondition for the blessings. It matters. It matters. Will somebody repair their parts today? Will somebody repair their parts today? Is the hand of the Lord stretched out to you? Will you just hold that hand and say, God, I'll follow you anywhere you go. I'll lead. Anywhere you lead, I'll go. Anywhere you lead, I'll go. I'll follow you. I'll follow you. Say you are bothered about the things I have not done. Say, but this is the thing I've been telling you. Oh, you have taken my work, my things with levity. Say, it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be like this. God is telling me to tell you. It's this voice you have been hearing. It's not your guilt. It's this voice you have been hearing. It's not your conscience. It's, it's his voice. It's been his voice. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadeni at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.